If you want to be it. somebody, oh. if you want to go somewhere, you, go. you better wake up and pay, pay attention. attention. Yeah, oh, see there. Right okay, okay, come on. 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 If you want to be somebody, that's it. If you want to go somewhere, then you better wake up and pay, pay attention. Okay. Where you at? If you want to be somebody, okay. if you want to go somewhere, then you better wake up and pay attention. Um, um. What's going on guys? Thank you guys for tuning in to 8 Connection TV. Subscribe, baby. Also, check out my two new channels, 8 Connection TV 2 and ACTV Games. When you go through those channels, subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell. Hey, what's going on beautiful people? Thank you so much for tuning in to 8 Connection TV, the one channel on YouTube where we actually adopt similar connections despite our differences. And I am here to talk about The Challenge Invasion, Episode 10, Go Your Own Way, which, quite frankly, had the best ever elimination challenge that we could ever ask for and i'm so excited and i just can't hide it bananas got kicked off of the show by an upstanding profound amazing guy who plays this challenge plays these challenges like the the king that he is but with such a humble heart and, and 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 just so pure like you like you want Darrell to win you want him to get his damn camper there's no reason why anyone would go against Darrell and so I'm just I just have to say it was a it was a good fight bananas is definitely competitive he's definitely uh, a champion in his own right he's won he's won whether whether we well, I know I hate the methods and the way that he won, but when it comes to actually doing physical challenges, he beasts at doing physical challenges. So you can't hate him when he at least gets himself there. You know what I'm saying? You can hate him for his people skills. His people skills, quite frankly, suck. It's like I wonder if he's the only child. I don't know, but it probably isn't. But it's just his people's. He's his people skills are piss poor. But anyways, um, we get past that. And Darrell wins, and I'm screaming. You know, it was like 3:45 a.m. when I was watching this, so I couldn't really scream, but I'm screaming in my head. And then we get to Carl Maria and Laurel, and damn, I mean, it seems like Carl Maria can't beat Laurel in any elimination. This is the second elimination that she fought against her and lost miserably. Didn't score one point whatsoever, and I was just like, oh damn, you know? I mean, ouch. You know, the fact how Laurel yoked her up and carried her across the thing. Wow. How big is Laurel? That's what I would like to know. It's like when I look, when I sit down in this chair and I look up at the wall, I'm like, girl, how big are you? Laurel and Nicole. Apparently, they're together. Apparently, they're doing their thing. Um, so says you guys, because I don't really follow their Instagrams like that. But apparently, they're together. And you can see that there is chemistry there. You can see that it's like that puppy love, that cat and mouse chase sort of thing that Nicole loves and that that uh, notion or thought of being chased that Laurel just so happens to love. Laurel loves the attention and she loves to control the attention that's you know brought her away. At least that's what I'm getting from this episode. And in the beginning, you know, Laurel is really standing strong. She's like, no, you used me. You like my friend. And I'm not here to play your games. You should have been up front with me because there were real feelings involved. And, you know, Nicole is just like, well, I didn't mean to. I didn't know. Oh, my God. Like, you're just, I didn't do anything wrong. You're being unfair. And I'm just like, okay. So this is how she's going to win her back. This is a damn for sure way how she's going to get her way. Because Nicole seems like the type of person that when dealing with females, except for the one that broke up with her before they got engaged, before she got on the show, um, she seems to be able to handle herself. And she gets whatever it is that she wants. I don't see for one second how it's remotely possible that you know this girl is after your friend. But then again, I mean, you know, Nicole's like, it wasn't really like that. We were just playing along and 
she's not the type of girl that I want ultimately, you know, I didn't really think that I'd have these feelings for you and that I'd be connected to you in some sort of way, but she wouldn't have been singing that song had Cara Maria still been there. So it's kind of hard to believe everything that's coming out of her mouth. Granted, we don't see every situation that she's with Laurel, but it just, it, it's a huge question mark over my head or beside my face, you know, and it's just like, I don't know. But hey, they're doing their thing, they're making it work. Okay, sera, sera, we will move on. Shane, Shane, Shane. Shane from As The Heart, no, that's not it. It's Chad from As The Heart Turns, the one and only. Bow, that's what you get for Dog and Donna, okay? And if you think, anyway. Um, Shane, I'm assuming that he's acting like an asshole because he's drunk. I'm assuming that he doesn't care about the things that are coming out of his mouth because he's drunk. I'm assuming that he's dredging up these horrible feelings that actually has for Hunter to resurface because he's drunk and he just doesn't care. And he's trying to point the finger at someone else, but at the end of the day, it's only pointing to him. This whole situation dealing with Hunter and Shane, I'm surprised. Well, Hunter has a lot of uh, restraint and control over himself. Because someone like that would really get under my skin and it would really aggravate me to a point where things could possibly become physical. Because it just didn't make sense why Shane was acting the way that he was. And then, to get through all of this, and they literally have to tell Hunter to walk away, I thought the funniest thing this whole episode was when he was like, nobody can beat me! Hunter was yelling, nobody can beat me! You see CT in the back like, I can. I can. I can, and I'm just like, oh, CT, stop it, stop it. <laughs> stop it, CT, stop it, stop it, CT. Oh, my God. Yeah, CT is another evolved guy, but Darrell was always cool. Like, I remember him always being cool, but he just got better. Like, kids change you. Kids make you better, you know? And CT, by God, I, I, it's, it's, I hope it comes down to... Two, two dudes and two girls or some I don't know how they're gonna divide this up that's I really want to know how they're gonna divide this all this up because usually it's three and three isn't it three and three is like six always at the end and like you get first second and third place I don't know we'll see how they figure this out I'm not entirely sure how it's gonna work but anyways um, I would love to see CT and Darrell at the end and it seems like that we're heading in that direction I guess I don't know um but yeah, Shane Shane has a conversation with Darrell, and he's literally like, all of these people are dumb, I don't care about them, Ashley and Amanda forget about it, I kind of think that they're kind of smart, but they're really not, and he's like, I can't believe I'm stuck in this house with these dumb people, and I'm like, wow, this is how he really feels? Wow. Okay, I mean, that's how he really feels. All right. So we get to the challenge, and this tube challenge was actually pretty physical and awesome to watch. I always wonder, when I watch these challenges, if I can do these challenges, and I don't know if I would have been able to do this. I don't know. It seemed pretty easy. I mean, if these females are getting through, why can I get through? That's what I'm thinking to myself. Uh, but shout out to the MVPs, right? Shane killed it. Corey killed it. Darrell killed it. Laurel killed it. The only female, yeah, the only female that made it through. Yeah, Jenna was almost there, but for whatever reason, she couldn't pull her rope. She couldn't pull herself up on the rope. And I'm just like, I don't understand why you can't pull yourself. I don't, I don't know. But whatever, um, it was a fantastic, fantastic uh, challenge to watch. Beasts, Laurel and freaking Darrell. Um, CT and uh, uh, Camilla, not so much. Like, terrible. I'm shocked at CT. Not so shocked with Camilla, I'm just not. I mean, it was shocking that she made it to the other end that fast, but for whatever reason, she couldn't pull herself up. I couldn't understand that. But she was talking about Amanda, but she couldn't get up. So it was what it was. We get past that and then TJ tells them that they don't have to worry about going on. They don't have to worry about an elimination. That uh, this is just for the money. And I'm like, okay, look at how many people there are. There's way too many 
underdogs compared to the champions. It's just an unfair disadvantage, period. But whatever, we're still letting these underdogs get away with this bull crap. Okay, so we're throwing a, they're, we're gonna throw them a party. They just won ten grand. We're gonna throw them a party. They're all gonna get along. Everybody's loving each other. And I tell you, the absence of bananas is just fantabulous. I love it. I freaking love it. Of course, you have Camilla Gunner for Amanda and that old thing. But it seemed like this particular episode, all of the relationships or the interactions were entertaining to watch. Nicole and Laurel, uh, Darrell and Shane, Shane and Hunter and Ashley and Amanda, that whole debacle, uh, the challenge in itself, CT and Darrell talking to the underdogs, it just, it all felt great. It felt like an awesome challenge rooted in deep history to watch in the absence of Johnny. Oh my God, I just, it just... It makes a huge difference when he's not there. It makes a huge difference. It feels like it feels like the challenge becomes a traditional challenge. You know what I'm saying? Where it's all about the game and not about BS. So I was completely here for it. I really was. Um, and so we get through the party, and then TJ shows up. CT already knew that something was amiss. He was like, "This is not. I was going to go down." TJ is going to show up. I know he is. That's just what he does. And showing up, TJ showed up, and he was like, we need to cut y'all underdogs down. And I'm like, yes, y'all do. Y'all need to cut these underdogs down. It's doing way too much. It's hurting my eye sockets. Let's get rid of them. And boy, when I tell you, do their whole attitudes just switch off and change. They went from, whoo, 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 shot down my throat, shot down my throat, shot down my throat, shot down my throat, stick my penis in the toilet water and swirl it around. Stick, you know what I'm saying? Just stupid, stupid stuff. And they go, they go from that to, I mean, damn, how am I going to survive? Listen, I want to know who y'all think is going to go home. Out of all the females, I feel like Nicole and Jenna can beast it. They really can. Like, Nicole and Jenna can beast it. That's it. Ashley is a beast, too. I can't discredit Ashley. Ashley is the beast. Shay, these are the beasts of this particular season. You have Darrell, you have Laurel, you have Shane, you have Nicole, you have Jenna, although Nicole's been messing up. No, Nicole, Jenna, um, and I said Shane already. Those are the beasts. Everyone else, like Nelson and like Amanda, I don't know how they're still there. They're still there because of majority rules. I'm not sure. Who do you think is going to be the two final men and the two final girls. Leave your comments below and let me know what you think. Because I'm dying to see this whole bloodbath, underdog bloodbath. So we can skim the fat a little, trim the fat a little. I'm Wesley from Making Nation TV The Network. Thank you guys for tuning in. Deuces.